All right, guys, welcome to another video. We are at the New York International Auto Show at the Porsche stand, and we are in front of the brand new redesigned Porsche Panamera. This car has had an interesting design history when it first came out, to be honest with you. I thought the original design was a little frumpy, but look at it now. Well, we are gonna look at it now. We're gonna take a closer look at this redesigned Porsche Panamera for 2024. This is the third generation of this sporty luxury sedan and it has big updates for 2024 that include new and refreshed exterior looks, which we will get into in a minute, and many changes beneath the skin, including more powerful engines, a completely new interior layout, and more technology. So let's start with some of the tech stuff here. So the suspension, as standard, the Panamera is equipped with a two chamber, two valve air suspension, which also includes Porsche Active Suspension Management or PASM. The two valve tech separates the control of the compression and rebound of the damper from each other and offers greater range between comfort and sportiness. The new suspension irons out bumps and road imperfections yet offers better body control during spirited driving. Available is an optional rear axle steering to improve handling by simulating longer or shorter wheelbase depending on how the rear wheels are turned. So for example, at high speeds, the rear wheels turn with the front wheels for more stability. And at low speed, the rear wheels turn opposite the front wheels to tighten the turning radius. Optional Porsche Active Ride Suspension is available for e-hybrid models, which Porsche claims will provide an even more range and feel between comfort settings and driving dynamics than the standard setup. This Active Ride Suspension uses active shock absorbers which are connected to an electronically operated hydraulic pump the pump can quickly and precisely increase pressure to counter and absorb road imperfections. But the big benefit is that it keeps the body of the Panamera completely flat, even during heavy braking when the car would normally pitch forward. Or during heavy cornering, the car will remain level. Even under hard acceleration, the nose won't lift up. The car will be completely flat. And when entering and exiting the vehicle, the car will raise the ride height to make ingress and egress out of the car easier. Engines. This Panamera 4 all-wheel drive model has a 2.9 liter V6 turbo engine developing 23 more horsepower than before, making it 348 horsepower. And it creates 37 pounds feet of torque more than before, raising that total figure of up to 368 pounds feet. The Panamera 4 clocks 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds and has a top speed of 168 miles an hour. The base Panamera, which is a two-wheel drive Panamera, gets the same engine, rear-wheel drive only, and does the sprint in 5.0 seconds. And then there are the e-hybrid models. The Panamera 4 e-hybrid all-wheel drive uses 2.9 liter V6 turbo. It pumps out 300 horsepower, but it combines 187 horsepower electric motor for a total maximum output of 463 horsepower and 479 foot-pounds of torque. There is also a Panamera 4S e-hybrid, and when that S comes on, you know it's a little bit more sporty in feel. That gets a more powerful V6 turbo engine. Combined with that electric motor, makes a maximum output of 536 horsepower and 553 pounds-feet of torque. Big dog. But then there's an even bigger dog on top of that, the turbo e-hybrid, the top dog has a 4.0 liter twin turbo V8 with an electric motor generating 187 horsepower. So the total maximum output combined is 670 horsepower with 685 pounds feet of torque. That is a beast. The electric motor is integrated into the eight speed dual clutch PDK transmission. And that goes from zero to 60 in 3.0 seconds with a top speed of 195 miles an hour. That is pretty quick. All right, guys, let's take a look at the updated styling of the new Porsche Panamera. As you can see, there's a lot more creases, a lot more kind of angular shapes now. Um, gone are those very rounded shapes of the Panamera. Even look at this light housing. It's kind of this hexagonal shape with the four-point running daytime running lights running horizontally within that shape. Kind of gives it a much more modern, updated look than the very round, bulbous look it had before. Um, even the horizontal ventilation across the bottom here um, is one clean 
straight line to emphasize the width of the vehicle and this functional air scoop here to increase that is required for increased cooling and check out this vertical bar on the side here with all those creases around the edges of the car it gives it a much more modern angular kind of chiseled look versus the rounded look of Panameras of the past even looking down the side of the car, this traditional vent is probably fake. Um, it has been kind of squared off a little bit more than in the past. And of course the greenhouse, the cabin has the classic uh, Porsche 911 shape around it. But of course it's ending with this kind of angled shape at the end, which differentiates this car from the Porsche Taycan, which is very rounded at this point. And as you can see, there's even more creases and cuts to give it more of a chiseled athletic look as opposed to the bar of soap that it used to look like before sorry um, but also there is the light bar that goes full width of the car to again emphasize that width make it look wide and low but that classic light bar is classic Porsche 911 it's just been reinterpreted and updated and modernized to appear on the Porsche Panamera let's take a look inside of the pan You know, very nice, um, clearly inspired by the Taycan. This does have the multiple screens, a passenger screen as probably an option, center screen, and then everything is piano black. But there are a few hard buttons here, much like you see in the other modern Porsches, like the Macan. Cup holders, of course, and more storage underneath of this leather coverage center area kind of nice bronze trim here which i kind of like oh, very nice one other added quality for the panty is soft closing doors which is a nice added feature here very nice sitting inside the cockpit of the panamera very nice luxurious leather everywhere and this is not even the turbo or high-end model i think this is a panamera 4 um so one of your more base models if you can ever call any porsche base i love this kind of goldish it's not gold but kind of um matte finish um bronze kind of detailing here and it's picked up on uh, a lot of the trim on the inside in this particular model um this particular model has um interior lighting but you can see there's like this wood inlay kind of peeking out from behind the levels um that the center console has this center console is kind of high see look, see where my knee is it's kind of very high in here which is an interesting choice these are some hard buttons for your hvac um, your heating and cooling in the cabin your volume knob under here is where you can store your phone oops there we go wireless charging here for your phone usb ports in there and i think it has soft clothes as well but look at that piano black and all the dirt that it attracts and fingerprints i'll put in some b-roll here to show Porsche's footage of the interior. And as you can see, it's very much inspired by the Porsche Taycan. When you look at the displays for the instrumentation, the center infotainment display, as well as the 10.9 inch screen in front of the passenger, which also has Porsche's new video streaming capabilities. So the passenger can watch a video, but there is a film over top of that passenger display to prevent the driver from watching it as well. And of course your driver control on the side on the right side of your steering wheel here. Nice paddle shifters, you know, small, but nice. Here's how they look. But traditional classic Porsche paddle shifters there. Yeah, it's a nice place to be. This seat, I probably could move it up a little more, but let's see what the seating position is like behind. All right, here is the look at the interior space of the uh, Panamera. I do love the bucket seat look in the back seats as well. As you can see, there's not intent, no intention for a fifth passenger in the middle there. Um, there is just this center console there. And as you can see, there's storage in the middle. Yep. There's storage in the middle there for cup holders. Close that back up. Piano black again, which will show fingerprints. USB port connections, and I would assume that black area here will be climate controlled that would show up. 
But yeah, I do like the bucket seat look in the back seat, but let's see if they're comfortable. We'll jump on in. All right, we have jumped in. And, oh, I do like the little mini sunroof above me here. The shade happens to be pulled, and then there's a larger sunroof uh, above it for the front passengers. That's kind of cool. It's not a full panoramic, but it's kind of cool that there are two shades here. So it gives you the option of having someone in the front with the window shade open, as you see here, or the back, keeping it nice for, you know, maybe you have a baby in the back. I do love the, the attention to detail on the back of the seat. Look at all the shapes and everything that are designed back here. It's just not one like slab. There is um, kind of a netting here for storing something really small down there. But yeah, there, it's tight because this seat is set, uh, the front seat is set for my seating position. So it is a little bit tight back here for me because considering how big of a car this is, the ink recline on this seat feels amazing. It's not as big as I thought it would be though. Now, I could move the front seat a little bit up farther and still be comfortable up there. So I do think this front seat is kind of pushed back. But nonetheless, for my six foot three frame, this seat feels a bit tight. But there is some space above my head. My head is not rubbing the headliner. I'm a little surprised that I'm squeezing myself back here. We're here at the back. Let's see if we can open it. Yes, we can. There is a decent amount of space back here in this sports sedan, but by no means is this sedan going to compete with a big SUV as far as volume of space back here. Of course, it's low because it's a sedan, so you have a height uh, limit here, but it is deep. You can increase the cargo space back here by folding the seats down and you have a 40-20-40 split. But if you're doing a short road trip with three of your friends, you should be able to fit your luggage back here. Pricing. The 2024 base Panamera rear-wheel drive starts at about $103,000. The Panamera 4 all-wheel drive starts at about $109,000, $110,000. The Panamera 4e hybrid comes in at around $115,000. The 4se hybrid comes in at $126,800. And the big top dog turbo e hybrid starts at about $191,000. So these are some pricey propositions, but you know, it's Porsche, right? And of course you can get so many options added to these cars a la carte that the prices will just kind of go up from there. All right, so there's our look at the brand new redesigned, updated Panamera. I think it looks a lot better now. They've continued to evolve it. They've uh, added a lot of modern Porsche design touches that they've applied to the other modern Porsches to this car. Tell me what you think of the new look of the Panamera. There's a lot more content to come from the New York International Auto Show. So please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video, y'all. Safe driving, everybody.